Hey everyone, so here's all the problems that I'm going to go through the solutions of today. And I really encourage you, it's the point for you to try to do these yourself. And you can also find the whole worksheet in the description. Okay, so what are we asked to do? We're asked by factorizing to show that x squared plus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0 for real x. Okay, so it's a show question. That means that we have to explain why something's always true. And it's asking us to show that something is greater than or equal to zero. So that just means to show that it's not negative, that it's never negative, right? And that ties nicely. Oh, uh, that ties nicely in with the fact that we know we're doing questions about the trivial inequality. And we know that for any perfect square, it's greater than or equal to zero. So we can kind of see where we're trying to get to. We're told to do it by factorizing. So let's factorize the left hand side. We start with x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, and so what is that equal to? Well, it's it's a perfect square. We can see that it's in the form of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, where a is x and b is 1. So that's just going to be x plus 1 squared. Okay, and by the trivial inequality, so we can write by trivial inequality, Okay, we see that x plus 1 squared is greater, th greater than or equal to 0. Okay, because that's what our trivial inequality states. It states that any real square number is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so this problem's a lot like the last one, and straight away we're going to look for a perfect square, but we don't have one, so we're going to need to complete the square in order to get a square in here so we can use the trivial inequality. So let's do that. Um, so we have x squared minus 8x. Okay, to complete the square, we're going to have to choose our constant term carefully. So we remember we half the middle term and then we square it, so halving it is minus 4. And squaring it is 16. So we're going to add 16. We ha And then we have to minus 16. Because we can't just randomly add things. And then we have to add our 20 from before. Okay, so now we can factorize, factorize this part. Which we got into the form of x minus 4 squared. And now we have our minus 16 plus 20. But 20 minus 16 is just 4. Okay, well, we know that 4 is greater than 0, and we know that x minus 4 squared is greater than or equal to 0 by the trivial inequality. So we can conclude that x minus 4 squared plus 4 is greater than 0. Okay, so for this problem, we have to show that another expression is always going to be is always going to be greater than two in this case. Okay, so it's similar to the last ones, except that we also have this restriction that x is positive. And if we know that x is positive, we know that that gives us some special tools, special tricks that we can use with inequalities. For example, we're allowed to square both sides, or we're allowed to times both sides by x. Right, so. The, the latter the latter option, timesing both times by x, that seems like a good idea because we have a 1 over x here, so let's do that. So this is, a, is equivalent to writing x squared plus x is greater than or equal to 2x. Now, if this, if this statement that I've written is true, then the statement we want to prove is true because they're equivalent statements. So let's write some more equivalent statements. For example, it's equivalent to say that x squared minus, or sorry, this, that should be a 1. So it's equivalent to say that x squared minus 2x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 2, is greater than or equal to 0. And it's equivalent to that, because I can just factorize like we've done before, to write that x minus 1 squared is greater than or equal to 0. And this final statement here, this is true by the trivial inequality. Okay, and so the problem is solved. So we're asked to find all the integer solutions to the equation 
x squared minus 4x minus 3 is less than 0. Okay, so let's let's look for those. Okay, so we're going to try and force the trivial inequality to be here a little bit. And to do that, we're going to create a square. So we're going to complete the square once again. We're going to get x squared minus 4x. Okay, well, minus 2 squared is 4, so it's going to be plus 4 minus 4 minus 3 is less than 0. We're told it's less than 0. We're not trying to prove that, so we can write that down. That means that x minus 2 squared minus 7 is going to be less than 0, or equivalently, equivalently, x squared is going to be less than 7. x minus 2 squared is less than 7. So what can the left-hand side be? Well, the left-hand side can be any number that's less than 7, but by the trivial inequality, actually, it can't it can only be it can only be positive numbers right because a square can only be positive or zero by the trivial inequality so then what numbers what numbers can the left hand side be well okay what what integer squares are less than 7 well 0 squared is 0 which is less than 7 uh, 1 or minus 1 squared is going to be 1, which is less than 7. 2 or minus 2 squared is going to be 4, which is less than 7. But 3 or minus 3 is going to square to give 9, which is greater than 7. So only these five numbers are going to be solutions for what x minus 2 can be. Okay, but if x minus 2 is equal to 0, well, x is equal to 2. Alternatively, if x minus 2 is equal to 1, x equals 3. If x minus 2 is equal to minus 2, then x is equal to 0. Okay, and if x minus 2 is equal to 2, x equals 4. And if x minus 2 is equal to, um, I, I did minus 2, is equal to minus 1, then x is equal to 1. Okay, so we made it to question 5, and question 5 is looking a little bit more intimidating than, than the other ones did, but actually it's exactly the same idea, right? Because the, f the, first, thing, the first thing that I'm going to notice is that we have these square terms, right? Okay, we have, a, we have a bunch of square terms, and we also have a bunch of terms where we just multiply two numbers. And, well, what do we know that that looks like? Well, it reminds me, of course, of the expansion of a plus b squared, right? We're seeing that a whole bunch of times here. So with that little bit of intuition in mind, right, let's, let's try to rewrite this in a way that, where we can see it's true. Well, firstly, firstly, um, the left-hand side has been written in summation notation, but it might be easier for us to see if we just write it as so what we want to show is that, well, this is, this is equivalent. It's the exact same thing. a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared plus dot, dot, dot. Because we could have any number of a's here, right? Any number of a's all the way up to how many are there? Well, there's n. There's a n squared is the highest one. So it's the sum of a bunch of squares. That's the left-hand side. And then our right-hand side is, is the same as above, right? It has our a1, a2, and I'm not going to write many terms, all the way up to a n, a1 is our last term. Okay, so we want to show this. Well, what I think, what I reckon that we might want to do is, okay, well, if we want to get these all on one side so we can do a bunch of factorizations, I'm going to subtract those a1s, a2s, all of that, from the right hand, from both sides. So this is equivalent to saying, well, let's put, let's, we'll just rewrite these. Okay, so now we're gonna minus this a1, a2, and minus all of those, and then minus a n, a1. Okay, well, that's not so bad. It looks nicer, so we can try and take these terms and work out, okay, so how are we gonna make, how are we gonna make some factorizations in the form of a squared plus b squared plus two ab? Where can we see those? Well, I could get a one squared and a two squared, and then, well, we have a one, a two, but we only have one a one, a two. We don't have two ab, 
right? So there's the first problem that we have. Well, the second problem is that our a2 squared, for example, should appear twice. It should appear in two factorizations because it's going to appear in the a2, a, well, it's going to appear in a2 plus a3 all squared, and it's going to appear in a1 plus a2 all squared, right? So we have we have terms for all of those expansions over here, but we don't have enough squared terms over here, right? But I think we're saying that we have half of everything that we need. So if we just times both sides by two, right? Well, zero times two is just is just going to be zero. So. That's fine. And on this side, well, let's have a look. Now we have an a1 squared, and we have a, well, we have a 2a1, a2 term. Oh, well, that's a minus, actually. Minus 2a1, a2. And we also have an a2 squared. Okay, so there's, there's our first our first perfect square, you can see that's in the form of a perfect square. And our second one, well, now we have a second a2 squared, right, that we got. And we have a2, a3, and, well, sorry, I keep writing these terms wrong. Minus 2, a2, a3, plus a3 squared, right? And that is running out of room, but that's a dot, 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 because now we have all of these. All these terms are going to become perfect squares. Right, so we can we can factorize all these terms, and so this is the same as saying that a one a one minus a two squared plus all the way up like all of these all the way up to um what were those dots for? I don't really know. All the way up to a n minus a one squared is greater than zero. And we can see that that is going to be true. That's going to be true by the trivial inequality because it's the sum of squares, and squares are always non-negative, right? So the sum of non-negative numbers is going to be non-negative. We're asked to look for integer, integer solutions to this equation that you see here, this very complex looking equation. Okay, how is it that we can use the trivial inequality to solve equations. Well, let me tell you, for example, x squared plus y squared is equal to zero. Let's consider solutions to this equation. Well, in fact, by the trivial inequality, we know that neither x squared nor y squared can be negative. Both of them are greater than or equal to zero, which means the only way this is possible, the only way this can be exactly equal to zero is if both of these are zero, if both x and y are zero. So we're gonna use the same idea to solve this equation up here. Okay, so let's let's first get zero on the right-hand side, seems like a good idea, so I'm gonna move everything over to the left-hand side. So we're gonna get, firstly, our x squared plus five, uh, y squared plus 10 z squared. minus, and we're going to subtract that 4xy minus 6yz minus 2z plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is the equation that we want to solve. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to factorize parts of it into perfect squares. So firstly, I'm going to look at, first thing is going to be the 4xy term, min or minus 4xy. So let's see how we can we can make a perfect square out of that. Well, we'll take the x squared, and we can take two of these two of these y squareds. So x. So we take out two of the y squareds, or sorry, four of the y squareds. I should say. We will get. X plus, or sorry x minus 2y all squared. So now we have no x squareds left over, we have no xy's left over, and we have one y squared left over. So considering that, let's move on, and now let's consider our yz terms. Okay, so we're gonna need, we're going to need, if we have six yz's, 
we can take uh, nine z squareds, for example. So let's let's do that. Let's take nine z squareds, and we're going to take our one remaining y squared, and we're going to factorize. So we're going to get from that. So y minus 3z squared. And you can see that's going to expand out to the exact same thing. That's going to be y squared plus 9z squared minus 6yz, right? Which is what we've got here. So it's going to take all those terms, except that it's going to leave 1z squared left over. So now we have z squared minus 2z plus 1. Well, that, of course, is just a perfect square. Great. And that is equal to zero. And so we said by the trivial inequality, if the sum, if the sum of squares is equal to zero, then each of those squares must be equal to zero. So first let's look at this rightmost one. Z minus one squared is equal to zero, then z minus one is equal to zero. And so z, so we said z minus one. So now we solve for z, right? So now we can su substitute that z into the second, into the second square. So we have y minus three squared It follows that y minus three equals zero, and that y is equal to three. Okay, so now we found we found y. So in the third one, it becomes x minus x minus six squared equals zero, x minus six equals zero, so x is equal to six. Awesome, so we found deterministically that these could, this could be the only set of solutions to this equation. We're asked in this final question to consider a right angle triangle and it has sides A, B, C, and we wanna show that the sum of the two adjacent sides is gonna be less than or equal to the root two times the hypotenuse. Right, so let's start doing this problem. Well, the first thing we have a root two there, so I wanna square that at some point and, and get rid of that. I, it's easier to work with twos than root twos. Well, these are the side lengths of a triangle, so we know they're all positive, right? So the left-hand side and the right-hand side are positive, necessarily. So we can square both sides. We can square both sides straight away. We can say that this statement before is equivalent, okay, it's equivalent to the statement that a plus b squared is less than or equal to 2c squared. Great, we can expand out the left-hand side, subtract the right-hand side from both sides, we would get a squared, um, or actually I'll subtract, I'll just expand the left-hand side, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab is less than or equal to 2c squared. Okay, so now I'm gonna flip the inequality and subtract the a squared plus b squared plus 2ab from both sides now. So we have a squared minus b squared minus 2ab is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, hopefully you can see I just flipped the inequality around to get it in a greater than form because that's what the trivial inequality is. That's the form of the trivial inequality. And so this 2c squared is just c squared plus c squared. So here we have a, a c squared minus a squared, right? c squared minus a squared, well, that's going to be b squared by the Pythagorean theorem because it's a right angle triangle. Okay, we also have a c squared minus a b squared. That's going to be a a squared by the Pythagorean theorem as well. So we have b squared plus a squared minus 2ab. And of course, all of these statements that I've written, they're all equivalent to each other. Every one of these steps is reversible. And finally, that means that you can see that's a perfect square. Great. And that finishes the problem because by the trivial inequality, that statement is true.